Tonight on South Florida's news station, military leaders prepare for their secret ceasefire meeting out in the desert, and the U.S. says there will be no room for negotiation. A CBS News crew, including two Miami men, are free tonight, released from Baghdad six weeks after they disappeared in the desert. Military leaders say the chaos is overtaking what's left of Iraq. U.S. Marines show up the signs of victory, more of Iraq's leftover tools of destruction. And the Kuwaitis tonight are claiming a war victory of their own, saying that they shot down an Iraqi 747. Channel 7 News at 10 is next. On the next Golden Girls, Blanche's big sister faces surgery. You thinking about getting a facelift for your turkey waddle or what? But she's in for a shock. I'm dying. Will Blanche have a heart when Big Sis needs a kidney? You know what'll happen if I give her one? My ankles will swell, my eyes will puff up. I look just like the Pillsbury Doughboy. I give you one of my kidneys, but I'm sure you'd rather have one you can control. It's a test of sisterly love on the next Golden Girls. Monday at 7 on WSVN 7. And the pitch. If you come, they will play. We've got the field. Now all we need are you, the fans. Let's show everybody South Florida is ready to support big league baseball by coming to Joe Robbie Stadium March 30th and 31st when the Yankees play the Orioles. Make the dream come true. Go to bat for big league baseball now. Call Ticketmaster. Or call 1-800-255-3094. In Nassau, Freeport, and 700 islands close by, which makes everything better in the Bahamas, <laughs> even the price. After reviewing the broad spectrum of leading economic indicators, it appears we have a financial softening in a variety of sectors. The economy stinks. Even market leaders have been impacted. Uh, Honda dealers are loaded with Accords. Ergo, we are encouraging minimization of margins. Uh, they're selling the Accord EX for as little as 5% over cost. And are pressuring a downward spiral in the discount rate. And are offering 7.9% APR financing. This aberration will be short-lived. Hurry. Stand by 19%. Live from Channel 7, South Florida's news station, Rick Chambers. Weather with Steve Adams. And sports with Jay Hyler. This is Channel 7 News at 10. The secret location is set as allied and Iraqi military leaders prepare to negotiate a ceasefire. But the U.S. says there won't be any negotiating. And, um, I want to uh, tell my mother I love her. A Miami television sound man will finally get to see his mother now that he and his fellow newsmen are heading home from Iraq. And what they're leaving behind tonight in Iraq is being described as chaos. Good evening. Amidst reports that Iraq is awash in confusion, its military leaders are preparing to negotiate a permanent ceasefire. In fact, that meeting between the two sides is now just six hours away. Those ceasefire talks will be face-to-face, -face, one army commander to another. And while nothing is for certain, the Iraqis are expected to accept the Allied ground rules. The meeting will take place in a secret location somewhere in the coalition-occupied desert of southeastern Iraq near the Kuwait border. It will take place across a table. On one side, the Iraqi delegation. On the other, General Norman Schwarzkopf and General Ali bin Sultan, the commander of the Joint Arab Forces. And the rules are simple. The Allies will present the ceasefire requirements, and the Iraqis must accept them. It's not a negotiation, it's a meeting and discussion. Uh, and we will, we have already uh, forwarded to them uh, some of those conditions that will be discussed or will be laid in front of them at this meeting. But what if Saddam Hussein hesitates? If in fact the Iraqi leadership doesn't uh, get into step and become fine tuned to what, what's going on, we can transition very, very quickly into offensive operations again, which would mean a uh, recommencement of the, uh, of the air campaign and any ground operations that we see necessary. The primary condition of the talks will be for Iraq to release all prisoners, both military and civilian. The question of American POWs will be right at the top of the agenda. Uh, 
Uh, it's very, very important for the Iraqis to understand that we do not yet have a ceasefire. What we've done is to suspend military operations. Allied commanders will also want to know where Iraqi naval and land mines are located before more Allied soldiers die. A demilitarized zone may also be set up between the two sides. And the Allies want to know where the Iraqi stockpiles of biological, chemical, and possibly nuclear weapons are located. We understand the UN Security Council has been burning the midnight oil in New York, and we understand that they have just approved a resolution that is likely to lead to a permanent ceasefire in the Gulf War. American prisoners of war could soon be heading home. Iraq says it is now ready to exchange POWs. The Allies are holding more than 50,000 Iraqis, while 13 Allies have been captured. At least nine of them are Americans. The Red Cross says that Iraq is now willing to comply with the Geneva Convention and is ready to swap prisoners. It is chaos in the southern Iraqi city of Basra as Saddam's defeated army moves in. On the road into Basra, hundreds of Iraqi military vehicles are abandoned, some with their engines still running. And in Iraq's second largest city, civil order appears to have collapsed with gridlock and confusion in the streets. Shooting incidents have apparently broken out between those for and those against Saddam. It hasn't broken down by any means, but the signs uh, are dem uh, definitely demonstrating that the break up is there. And therefore, people are taking courage and showing their anger and frustration against the regime. Military analysts say that Basra took the brunt of the Allied bombing. Iraqi opposition leaders are considering Basra to be the base of a national salvation arm government. While most of the world knows there is a ceasefire, apparently some Iraqi soldiers haven't gotten the word. Today, several Iraqi tank divisions still in Kuwait attacked U.S. forces in the area. The Americans fired back, destroying several tanks and taking about 1,000 prisoners. In other news, they had been missing for six weeks, but tonight a four-man CBS News crew is on its way home. The crew was freed earlier today from Baghdad, and they arrived in Amman, Jordan tonight. The crew is now on its way to London, and then eventually it will move on to the United States. As Channel 7's Hilda Fernandez reports, two of the men worked in South Florida out of the CBS Bureau right here in Miami. CBS correspondent Bob Simon and his three-man crew walked out of the Al Rashid Hotel in downtown Baghdad today, free for the first time in over a month. As you can see, we've lost a little weight. We've aged a little, but we're fine. This is a story that could have ended another way, but it's had a happy ending. But this happy ending began with some frightening moments for the TV crew, their family, and friends. Simon, producer right. Peter Bluff, cameraman Roberto Alvarez, and right. soundman Juan Caldera right, disappeared near the Saudi-Iraq border six weeks ago, their abandoned car discovered with most of their belongings inside. Their whereabouts were a mystery until mid-February, when it was reported they were alive but held captive in Baghdad. Miami CBS Bureau joined the scores of international journalists and diplomats that called for their safe release. Two of the men, Alvarez and Caldera, worked out of the Miami Bureau. Iraq says they released the men in response to a Soviet request. The men say they're just happy to be free. I want to thank everybody involved in that release. Above all, I want to thank God that the four of us are alive. And um, I want to uh, tell my mother I love her. I want to uh, apologize to my family for what they've gone through. And hopefully God blesses everybody that's still out there. And uh, I hope I hope they'll all be okay soon. And God bless all of them. Thank you. In Miami, Hilda Fernandez, Channel 7 News. And the families of Roberto Alvarez and Juan Caldera are heading to London right now to meet with their loved ones. The CBS crew is asking Iraq to free the other POWs that are still being held captive. Okay. Iraqi soldiers apparently dropped what they were doing to clear out of Kuwait, and that is making for some interesting scavenger trips in the desert. U.S. Marines are finding loads of Iraqi hardware in Kuwait. A lot of it is nothing more than war debris that doesn't work, but a lot of the equipment works just fine, and U.S. Marines are checking out the weapons that just a week ago were aimed at them. Uh, not as far as I can tell. It runs pretty good. What do you think the Iraqis left it? I guess they didn't feel like fighting us. 
U.S. officials say that the Iraqi weapons weren't bad. They say if the soldiers had really put up a fight, there would have been a lot more Allied casualties. The Allies shot down many Iraqi planes during the Gulf War, but the Kuwaitis may have scored the biggest hit of all. Kuwaiti resistance fighters say that they shot down an Iraqi 747 carrying 126 military officers. The Kuwaitis say that plane was just taking off from Kuwait City when they blew it up with a surface-to-air missile, killing everyone on board. And we could soon see proof of that attack. The Kuwaitis say they have it on videotape and they are planning to release it. The 213 American soldiers wounded in the Gulf War are returning to the United States now to recuperate at hospitals near their homes. Sergeant John Smith will be returning to Fort Sam Houston down in San Antonio, Texas. He was hit with shrapnel during a battle inside of Iraq. The blow forced him to lose the sight in his left eye. He, of course, calls this experience very frightening. You know, uh rounds going off and uh, I was never so happy to see an M1 come up beside me and fire. I was glad they was with us. Uh, Smith says he's looking forward to returning to Fort Sam Houston where uh, the military doctors are expected to take good care of him. And hundreds of people packed a church in Greensburg, Pennsylvania today to honor 13 Army reservists killed in the Gulf War. They died when the Iraqi Scud missile smashed into their barracks in Saudi Arabia. Friends and family listened as the sounds of taps rang throughout the building. President Bush has sent condolences to the families of those GIs, and he is sending a message to all American troops for a job well done in the Persian Gulf. In a speech that aired on Armed Services Radio today, Mr. Bush called the troops brave, and he says they've helped bring about a renewed sense of pride and confidence in the United States. Never have I been more proud of our troops or more proud to be your Commander-in-Chief. For today, amid prayers of thanks and hope, the Kuwaiti flag once again flies high above Kuwait City. And it's there because you and your coalition allies put it there. Throughout seven long and arduous months, the troops of 28 nations stood with you, shoulder to shoulder, in an unprecedented partnership for peace. Today, we thank you for the victory in Kuwait was born in your courage and resolve. The stunning success of our troops was the result of superb training, superb planning, superb execution, and incredible acts of bravery. The president says the troops are the finest combat force ever assembled. Still ahead, now that it's out of the business, Eastern Airlines is confessing. We'll explain. A Miami rent-a-car store is open for business one day after a deadly encounter. And parts of Florida are bailing out tonight. We'll show you that coming up on South Florida's news station. Channel 7 News brought to you in part by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a thorough test drive, simply phone your nearest BMW dealer. Today, the company that created the BMW 535i tries to blow it off the road. While all car makers pursue front-to-rear aerodynamics to save fuel, BMW also perfects resistance to crosswinds, which can save people. difference between an ordinary car and the ultimate driving machine. The Sound Advice Super Electronic Sale is going to put muscle in your buying power. Sound Advice has stripped back prices on audio, video, and mobile electronics to give you super savings. Save on our entire stock of camcorders like Panasonic's Palm Size VHSC. RCA 26 inch stereo TV now $449.95. Save on Florida's best selection of car and truck speakers. And save big on Kenwood Surround Sound Remote 5 Disc CD System just $899.95. Hurry, fly over to the Sound Advice Super Electronic Sale today for super savings. Right now, you can get Sizzler's all-you-can-eat triple shrimp combo, crunchy golden fried shrimp, tangy shrimp cocktail, and savory Cajun shrimp. Can I have more of just the fried shrimp? Yes. Can I have more shrimp cocktail? Sure. Just Cajun shrimp? Yeah. Good. I'll take all three. The all-you-can-eat triple shrimp combo. As much as you want of what you want. For a limited time only, only at Sizzler.
welcome and completely relaxed. The Cayman Islands. A double shooting in Miami tonight has left one man dead, his wife wounded. It happened in the 6800 block of Southwest 82nd Court. Now, police aren't releasing the names of the victims yet. They say that a man shot his wife and then turned the gun on himself. He died at the scene, but his wife survived. She's been taken to Jackson Memorial Hospital, where she is listed in critical condition. And a drive-by shooting in Northwest Dade also injured one person. Metro Dade police say that three people were actually standing in front of a house on Northwest 93rd Street when someone fired shots from a passing car. One of the three people was hit. He was taken to Jackson Memorial Hospital, where he is listed in critical condition. No suspects have been arrested. A Hialeah man goes to court tomorrow morning, charged with shooting and killing two of his former bosses at an Alamo car rental agency. The agency, east of Miami International Airport, was back in business today, although employees say that they're still shaken up by yesterday's shooting. Lazaro Martinez was fired from Alamo yesterday morning, and police say that he returned with weapons looking for revenge. He allegedly killed two Alamo managers and then wounded three others before police took him into custody. He is going to face a bond hearing first thing in the morning. For years, Eastern Airlines let its planes take off without performing critical maintenance procedures. The now defunct airline says that between 1985 and 1989, it misled federal safety inspectors by falsifying maintenance records. That admittance came as Eastern pled guilty to seven criminal conspiracy charges. In exchange for that plea, 53 other charges were dropped. The agreement stops any further pros prosecution of Eastern, but calls for the airline to cooperate in any investigation of its employees. Some residents over on Florida's west coast are having to spend this night away from their homes. That's because brush fires are raging over acres and acres of open land. Thick smoke and flames forced Citrus County officials to evacuate a small town and close part of a busy north-south highway. Forestry officials say nearly 500 acres have been scorched so far. Still ahead, it's Carnival, Miami style. We'll take you to the Orange Bowl for that. And it's mush, mush. It's off to the races in Alaska. A little taste of this unusual weather coming to South Florida. If you're gonna wear a hat tomorrow, you want, might wanna dig out an industrial strength hat pin. It's gonna be windy. And right now let's take a look at some of the conditions outside your door. Your Florida Nissan dealer knows one thing about you. There's really two of you. There's the practical you and the other you. The R Lucky Miss New with plate number CDM ATL has 15 minutes to call the station to win $20,000. Holy cow! The All East Sentra with sports sedan features like the most powerful standard engine in its class, rack and pinion steering, and front disc brakes. Because sometimes even practical people have important deadlines to meet. The 91 Sentra, the one car for the two of you. Sunday afternoon, around 5 o'clock. Poor guy blows an engine. Best price I can give him is more than he expected. So he calls his credit card company, Citibank. They increase his credit line, just like that. Citibank always seems to come through. Of all the credit cards I take, and I take them all, there's only one I take with me. Not just MasterCard, Citibank MasterCard. And the pitch. If you come, they will play. Drive, deep left field. It's up. We've got the field. Now all we need are you, the fans. Let's show everybody South Florida is ready to support big league baseball by coming to Joe Robbie Stadium March 30th and 31st when the Yankees play the Orioles. Make the dream come true. Go to bat for big league baseball now. Call Ticketmaster. Or call 1-800-255-3094. For those of you who still don't get it, this is your brain on drugs. And this is your brain on a hard roll with bacon and tomato. Remember, just say yes to an all new in living color. And what? Then, Kelly goes to modeling school. <laughs> and the whole family wants to get in on the act. Maybe there's a job for a runway model with dirty underwear. Gee, Your Honor, I don't know where that shotgun came from. Don't miss Married with Children Sunday. They are often mushing tonight in the world's most famous dog sled race. The Iditarod is sort of Alaska's version of the Indianapolis 500. 
And today, 75 contestants raced out of Anchorage. The course is almost 1,200 miles long, and it weaves all over the state. Usually takes about 10 to 12 days to finish the race, but there is some motivation to hurry through it. Waiting at the end is a $50,000 check for the winner. The others get much less. Oh, Ooh. much less. Wonderful. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Some folks tried that in Jacksonville uh, today, but they had to use water skis. You're mushing through the weather forecast. Yes, Bostwick, Florida had uh, golf ball size hail today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's been a messy day. This is Jacksonville. They had, uh, depending on which measuring station you were talking about, Mayport, uh, the Naval Air Station out there, Cecil Field, all had around an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half of rain today. And like I said, if they want to do their own I did a rod in Jacksonville, they could have done it with dogs and skis. But uh, this stuff is going to continue. We have uh, several spots across the state today. This evening, they're going to be watching out for severe weather. We have some flash flood warnings in parts of northwest Florida. Also, some tornado watches uh, in Escambia, Santa Rosa, and Escambia counties, Okaloosa County also until midnight tonight. And we have a high wind watch across much of the rest of the peninsula for tomorrow. So it's going to be rough. Here's the troublemaker right here. You can see this intense system moving across north Florida. And just about the time you think you get a little sunshine right in here, boom, here comes Punch number two across the panhandle. That's going to continue to push those heavy rains and uh, gusty winds all across that area. Now, here's the rest of the country. You see some messy stuff throughout uh, most of the central part of the country. Down in Louisiana, another band of showers and thunderstorms there. You see the real bright red and yellow there across north Florida. That's what's creating the very severe weather in our area, moving right on up the Carolina coast. All of that's going to saturate the southeast coast and up the uh, central Atlantic coast over the next couple of days. As you can see, that low pressure area is expected to stay right there, move very slowly, swing this other cold front uh, back across there. This other larger frontal system bringing colder air down in across the uh, upper Midwest from the Plain States where there's snows, pretty heavy snows, turning into ice and freezing rain as it moves into the Ohio Valley and on toward New England, the eastern states by in the first part of the week. So there's your national picture. Let's take a look at the forecast for us for tonight and tomorrow. Partly cloudy skies tonight, chance of showers low 72 to 75. Watch those winds starting to pick up tomorrow though. We're going to have a partly sunny day today or tomorrow and it's going to be windy, going to be very windy. A chance of showers but very very light and widely scattered, high about 85 degrees. As that front tries to get through here, though, it is going to be windy, so boaters watch out. There are high wind watches out. Also, for the lakes, inland lakes will be uh, watching for the high gusty winds tomorrow also and uh, on into Monday. Small craft advisories, uh, seas will be four to seven feet. Baywaters, needless to say, will be choppy, so boaters beware. The almanac calls for a time to be low at 345 in the morning. Next high tide, 949 a.m., sunrise 642, sunset 623. So as I said, Get an industrial strength hat pin for your hat tomorrow. Partly sunny, partly cloudy. Depends on how you look at it, and I guess. Very, huh? Yes, right. The glass half empty is half full. But it is going to be windy. You can, get on, you can get on that. All right. Thank you, okay. Steve. Rick. Still ahead, we'll have a recap of the third round at Doral. And the Heat are out in the Lone Star State. Jay Hyler is next. He'll have highlights of that. And in its ex extravaganza at the Orange Bowl as M Miami prepares for Coyote. <laughs> Mitsubishi 3000 GT is Motor Trend's Import Car of the Year. To celebrate, we're offering big savings on other award winners, including Eclipse Turbo, a Motor Trend top by two years in a row. Right now, you can save on any new Eclipse through factory to dealer incentives. The award winner is Mitsubishi. The savings winner is you. Starting at 11239, Eclipse is more than 3400 less than Celica Liftback. Now, in here, we can all express our true feelings to management. Change. I think you're a little unintelligent, insistent, arrogant, unpleasant, and totally incompetent. Thank you all for sharing that with me. Want to make your business relationships better? Use the best 1030 delivery in business. Morning. That's the nicest thing I've heard all day. Federal Express. Absolutely, positively the best in the business. Quaker State's lubrication guarantee is tough enough to protect your new car's engine for 250,000 miles. You could run out of roads before you run out of Quaker State protection because Quaker State is one tough motor oil. Fashion, creativity, and art. The biggest and best art festival of its kind comes home to the Museum and Bouvier Park in Fort Lauderdale. The Los Olas Art Festival, March 9th and 10th. Be there. Jay Heiler joins us now with sports. A very familiar face has the pole position at Doral. 
Did you just think of that? Yeah, it was kind of, kind of witty, I thought. It's very witty. <laughs> you really are talented. I know. You know that? One of Florida's <laughs> own, Big Andy Bean, is the man to beat at Doral. Three times he's captured the top prize, and he's in prime position to make it number four. After holding out from 100 yards at eight for Eagle, Andy drained this birdie at 12 yes. to go to 11 under. And speaking of Eagles, check out Russ Cochran's third shot on the par five 12. A little pitch and run. And... It's, it's in the hole. Cochran was running away at 15 under. Rocco Mediate continued his steady play. The birdie. Rocco finished at minus 12. But then the wheels fell off for Cochran down the stretch. Bogey's at 14, 17, and 18. Dropped him back to 12 under. Same story for Jack Nicholas. Jack got to 11 under, but then collapsed. He shot 75. And he finished up at seven and under par. Ahead. But while everyone faded, Andy Bean stood tall. This approach at 16, check it out, on the money. He fired a 67 and leads by a stroke with 18 holes to play. Well, I think if anything, it gives me a little advantage as far as experience goes on this golf course. When the wind blows, I like to play here because I feel like it's it helps me coming down the stretch. I'm a little stronger than some of the guys. And uh, like I say, hopefully I can make a few putts when I need to. You always need to do that. What am I, uh, six shots back? Yeah. Uh, that's uh, better than I was last year. I was sitting at home on Sunday last year. <laughs> Yes, Jack, always the optimist. So here's how it stacks up. Andy Bean hasn't won on the tour since 86 when he won at Durrell. Other players in the hunt include Davis Love and Lanny Watkins. Greg Norman is one over. I figure if he shoots 56 tomorrow, he might have a chance. Yeah, so will everyone else, though. After going 6-6 six and six for the month of February, the Heat began their March Madness in Big D tonight against the Mavericks. I don't want to call the fans in Dallas ugly, but uh, you get the idea. Glenn Rice helped the Heat to a 14-0 run early in the game. He bombs away from the outside. Mavs answer with a nine-point run of their own. Rodney McRae down the lane and jams it with the left hand. Still, the Heat control the first half. Rice again, this time the turnaround, Jay. He's had a big game so far. Ronnie Cycli also shined. Little baby hook down low. Heat on top, 48-44 at halftime. And then they picked it up in the third quarter. First, it's going to be Sherman Douglas. He comes up with a steal and takes it all the way in for the easy deuce. But then keep your eye on the ball. Here comes Glenn Rice in your face. Yeah, the Heat lead at 86-67 as they start the fourth quarter. Other scores, big night for Reggie Miller. He had 40 as the Bulls lose by 21, New York over New Jersey, and the Clippers lead Minnesota in the fourth. College hoops now. Bill Foster was Mike side for the Knowles in South Carolina. Miami High's Douglas Edwards with the rejection down the floor to Aubrey Boyd. Game tied five minutes to go, and that's when FSU took over Charlie Ward. He goes underneath to Reggie Dobar for the jam, and the Knowles were dancing as they beat the Gamecocks 70-59. Hurricane baseball team has been busy at the Superdome this weekend. Friday night, they lost a heartbreaker to number one LSU. But there's better news from this afternoon's game against New Orleans. Alex Miranda drove in a pair of runs in the fifth. That put the Canes on top, six to two. Then in the seventh, George Fabregas at the plate, and he gets all of this pitch going, going, and gone. A two-run shot. Canes win big 12-3. They finish off the Bush Challenge Tournament tomorrow against Tulane. Well, finally, sometimes when you're having a bad day, it feels like you're in the gutter. Just ask pro bowler Dell Ballard Jr. Final shot of the Fairlanes Open. Dell needs seven to pins to win. Del, Del no, it's in the gutter. Dell is hot. Get, Pete Weber can't believe he's I, the winner. I, I, the no moral the of the story, of the, on the, the next time it rains on your parade, remember, it could always be worse. So Del, I, you I could really have been Dell well, Ballard Jr. Can you believe that? I've never seen a guy. Seven pins, a pro bowler. He throws in the old gutter. I've never seen that before. Well, you it's great it. to see you. You saw it right here on <laughs> Channel 7. Thank you. All right. Jane. And finally tonight, it is a prelude to the world's largest block party, and it's going on right now in Miami. Carnival Miami lit up the Orange Bowl tonight. Thousands of people showed up to enjoy. The crowd swayed to the music as exotic Latin dancers and singers performed in colorful costumes. 
Carnival Miami has earned an international reputation for its rich cultural setting, and over the next eight days, Miamians can enjoy a vibrant mix of activities, including a parade, sports, variety shows, and a beauty pageant. Well, it'll be a busy week. Mm -hmm. That brings to a close Channel 7 News at 10. Thanks for joining us. I'm Rick Chambers. I'm Jane Acri. CNN Headline News is next for all of us here at Channel 7. Have a great night. And we'll see you tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Bye. -bye.